Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines. Uh, yesterday was the summer solstice, and so in celebration, I wanted to show off a whole bunch of zines that felt appropriate for the summer solstice or reminded me of it or, you know, otherwise just things that you can read during the new summer season. To start with, we have the Midsummer Folklore zine from Through the Hagstone. They have a whole bunch of different zines for uh, different holidays throughout the year, and it's talking about, I think, primarily British uh, lore, folklore, and events and ways that they celebrated the, uh, the different holidays. So it's really, really cool, and it actually is very well researched, very well referenced, and um, it just talks about a lot of the different folkloric traditions, and it always ends with a few ways that you could integrate that, or, or sort of reference the folkloric traditions in your own celebrations in modern times. It's really cool. So the summer edition, or, you know, the summer solstice, midsummer edition, <laughs> talks about St. John's Wort, and talks about um, ways to... Okay. Like, the coolest way, and the one that I never heard of, is that apparently uh, one celebration used to be setting a wheel on fire, like a wooden wheel covered in straw. You'd set it on fire at the top of a hill, and then roll it all the way down the hill. And if it, uh, if it <laughs> rolled all the way down the hill without going out, then it would be good luck and a good harvest. And there were, like, different sort of um, marriage foretelling uh, rituals and... and things that they did, activities that they did during the um, celebrations. And I don't know, it's just, it's really cool to actually um, feel connected to history because I feel like um, sometimes it's hard to remember that because um, a lot of times it's easy to feel kind of alone in celebrating um, these nature-based um, not generally recognized holidays, you know what I mean? So this is just just really nice and it really feels like um, recognizing the season and recognizing the holiday is like carrying on a grand tradition and um, and it's just it's so cute. Look at this cute little zine. I love it. It's so pretty. I love the I love the aesthetic of it. Okay. So that one's definitely the most obviously uh, summer solstice themed ones. And the rest of these are, um, more ones that I felt, I felt were appropriate for it. This one is Kitchen Witch Kit by Dame Darcy, who's well known for making, uh, tarot decks, but has been a prominent, um, comic artist and zinester for a very long time too. And this one, I love it so much. It's, it's Kitchen Witch Kit, spells you can easily make with items from your kitchen. And I feel like it's written, um, I don't know if as like an intended audience, but it definitely calls back to like a uh, 13 year old kids, especially like 13 year old girls, now that they have the summers off that they can play with their friends and do all these cool <laughs> magic rituals using stuff from their mom's kitchen and uh, you know, foretelling what their husbands are going to be and getting some annoying people to leave them alone with a banishing powder. <laughs> and um, it just feels very... Uh, oh, and it's it's got, like, <laughs> stuff about the symbolism of horses like for all those horse girls. And it's got um, some little horoscopes. And uh, I don't know. It just... It feels like a little magazine that I would have been totally obsessed with and I would have really loved as a kid to to validate all of these um, desires and interests and um, take it seriously but also have fun with it like I this this really feels it feels magical in the way of like encouraging you to actually do your own magic and and bring back the um, the sort of inherent belief in magic that you have when you're younger, you know what I mean? Um, so like some examples are, if I can just read, read a few things off of these, like this one, the friends forever spell, 
Cut a small lock of your hair and the hair of your best friend. Braid them together and tie the knot with a pink thread. Place it inside a pink silk conjure bag and keep it in a safe place. And you'll be friends forever. <laughs> like, isn't, isn't that just the cutest thing? Um, so I guess I just, I really, I really like this. And the, the sort of kicker, I guess, is the back. And it says, any reader who uses these spells do so at their own risk. And the author and publisher accept no liability if these spells do not have the desired effect or adverse effect they're caused. This book is not suitable for young children. And it's so funny because, like, if you... If, if there was a disclaimer, or if you told me this book is not suitable for young children when I was like 12 years old, I would have read, I would have snapped it up. I would have been so excited about it and be like, oh, I have to read this because, because I'm a big kid. Like I'm almost a teenager now. I got to see what this is all about. And, and I just, <laughs> I just, I just really like it. And it feels very like the sort of activity that I would have loved to do on a summer's day. Uh, so it feels appropriate for summer solstice celebrations. Okay, this next one is uh, Sacred Pussy Volume 1, and I believe there are two volumes right now, or I, at least I have two volumes and I haven't seen a third one. Um, this is one of those ones that I saw at the library and then I had to buy it for myself. <laughs> um, and basically it's just like... Uh, it's a zine about, um, skip past the, the big pretty page here. It's a zine about cats in history and mythology, in folklore, in magic, and just kind of, um, the way that we've made them sacred and some of the ways that we've celebrated cats. And, and I don't know, it's just really, it's really fun. It's like an informational historical zine that's just that's really cool. It's like teaching you the things and, and talking about the things that are actually really fun to talk about. Um, like, I mean, again, I feel like I would have been so interested in this when I was a kid and I was obsessed with, um, Egyptian mythology, although my parents probably wouldn't have liked the name Sacred Pussy. But anyway, uh, so like the thing that really makes me feel like this particular issue is a, summer solstice issue is because it focuses a lot on uh, Egyptian mythology and especially Sekhmet, who is the lioness goddess and uh, who's um, like a, 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 what do you even call it? Whatever, a representation of the sun god Ra. And yeah, here's like, here's a picture where you have the sun disc and I don't know, so, like Sekhmet is very associated with the, with the sun and with energy and action and and war and and bloodlust and a whole bunch of things but just feels very bright and sunny and um like fiery and appropriate for the um the summer solstice specifically and uh I was obsessed with Sekhmet when I was younger I did a page about Sekhmet in a uh like, ugh, oh my goddess. Okay, just read I Was a Teenage Girl, one of my zines, if you want more on that story. I'm not going to get into it here because that's, I, I made a whole zine about it, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I could talk about it and summarize it. But anyway, so this is just like a nice, fun, summary zine appreciating cats and cat mythology and does that, is that, does that count? <laughs> it counts. I'm saying it counts, so it counts. Okay, so now we've got uh, this little mini zine. Uh, it's not exactly a mini because it's more pages, but it's the size of a mini. And it's called The Witchy Zinesters Pocket Book of Spells. And this is by Dana at Cat Moth Crow. And it's, <laughs> it is so cool. So uh, July is International Zine Month, and summer is the perfect time for making zines, and I mean every time's the perfect time, but summer really is when I get really excited about it. There's all the festivals and there's all things, you know, happening. So the Witchy Zines Here's Pocketbook of Spells is excellent, and these are actually like, like really good. So I've seen sort of a lot of zines that talk about how zines are magical and how your, um, how would I, how would I put this? Like how, 
how the act of creation and especially the act of free creation that um, zines provide for you is a really magical act in itself. And I completely agree with that. But this scene, I feel like, takes it just a step further and talks about specifically, like, ways that you can really utilize the zine format and the copied format to make spells in a really interesting way that's specific for this. And it, it's like, you know, it's not just about, you know, incorporating not magic in your binding for, for your zine, which is completely valid and that's really cool. But this is like it's specifically made in such a way that you really, you almost couldn't do this, these spells without zines. <laughs> if that, if that makes any sense. Anyway, so I'll just get into it. These are like, here's an example of like copy shop spells, vanishing spell. One of the curious things about copy machines is how quickly a copied image will degrade the more times it's copied. This lends itself well to vanishing magic spells that neutralize negativity and banish ill will. Uh, I'll just skip a little bit. Uh, with a gray marker, what, write what you need to vanish. Copy it once, then copy that copy. Keep copying the latest copy until you have an edition of 11. Save these pages. The next time you're creating a zine, shuffle the pages within a stack of copy paper, then print your new zine onto them. Like, write whatever you want to vanish. And it's like, like, that is so cool! And that is so specific for zines, and that's, it's such an interesting use of the medium that I just never heard before. And they're so cool. And so, and there's a whole bunch in these. This is actually a pretty long thing. And I have to show this one off. A Zinester's Tarot, because of course I'm a tarot person too. And so it's like, swords become scissors, reasoning the decisions we make when we create. Cups become inks, toner, and glue. Instinctive, poetic, all of your thoughts coming together into a single creative project. Pentacles become concealed cash uh, in, like, cash in, in envelopes. Um, Wealth, prosperity, connection, the earth, the world around us. Wands become pens, active and creative, passionate. The words, the words we write, the act of writing. Like, isn't that, isn't that just so cool? Maybe I'll need to make a Zinester's Tarot at some point. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> anyway, so this is such an amazing, lovely little zine. And I, I, I really want to try to actually utilize this during International Scene Month and do stuff with it. Okay. Okay. Next up, it occurs to me that I probably could have included this one in the Unusual Formats zine, but I kind of forgot about it. <laughs> um, this is a, a little collection of basically like saint playing cards from Snake Hair, which is a local zine publisher. And so it has like these these images of different saints, uh, female saints, and on the back are like a little bit of information about them. So it's got their official saint day, what they're the patron saint of, and then a little description about the woman and what elevated her to sainthood. So it's it's really cool. <laughs> And we've got just a lot of really interesting little images. And I feel like this could almost be used as a mini oracle deck if you were so inclined. This is uh, Joan of Arc, who is one of my my favorite trans icons from <laughs> throughout history. Um, and let's see, there were a couple that I wanted to point out because they were, their saint days were of the season. Um, Saint Rosalia, July 14th, is her saint day, and Saint Liberata, July 20th, is her saint day. So, anyway, these are, like, <laughs> this is such an interesting idea and such a neat way to, um, to make a little zine, and it's all bound together just, like, with this little, um, strip of, strip, strip of paper and says snake hair on it so you know who made it. Okay, this one's kind of a goofy one. It's uh, The Layman's Guide to Witches of Home and Garden by uh, Michael E. Johnson, extension urban entomologist. <laughs> and this is so hilarious. It's, it's basically just like, it's like a collage zine that combines bugs and entomology with witchcraft and witches. Um, and, and it's like, the the text is cut primarily from 
scientific papers on entomology. And so it says like, this publication contains information that helps identify common and then blacked out and it says witches <laughs> that nest around the home and in the landscape and brings greater understanding of their biology and the valuable role they play in the environment. <laughs> um, in situations where stings are a concern, it also provides guidance for the management of witches <laughs> and treatment of their stings. And it's like this really neat little collage zine. Like, look at that. <laughs> That is so cool. Um, and like, I feel like the first time that I saw this, I, I was very confused by it. Like I didn't, I didn't totally get it. And I don't know why, because this seems like the sort of thing that's right up my alley of just like this very goofy, unusual combination with collages and images. And it's um, like... I don't know, but but I I feel like I have a new appreciation <laughs> for this zine that came out of nowhere, um, and so and something about just how goofy it is, and also the fact that like so many bugs are coming out now that it's the summer, just felt like yeah, this needed to be an appropriate theme for the summer solstice. I got this from the Wiggle Bird Mailing Club on Patreon, so I don't know if it's possible to get this particular zine again. I feel like you could probably contact um, the the creator at uh, poolparty666 on Instagram. I don't know. <laughs> Zines are ephemeral. It's just kind of the nature. All right. So this next one is part of the Nottingham Horror Collective uh, zine that they put out, and each zine is themed around a particular tarot card, and this one is themed around the sun. So naturally, and, and it's printed, like the color scheme, it's black, white, and yellow, and each one has a different um, accent color, like the Lovers has red, and it's it's really cool. So this zine, it's sort of like using a tarot card to um, as a theme for horror stories, uh, horror movies, horror literature, like the, here's an example of like Greenhouse of Horror, and it shows a bunch of different plants and how they were used in a particular um, horror story or horror movie or game or whatever, like a, a piece of horror media, and also a little bit about them and why they were chosen for it or why it was appropriate. Um, I really love this one, and this is the one that felt <laughs> appropriate I'm for the summer solstice is uh dancing on the sabbath and it's basically like I mean here it actually says it has some stuff about the summer solstice on June 21st 2021 we'll watch the sun, sun climb to its zenith and feel its warmth for the longest daylight hours of the year and it talks about stone circles in Britain um Stonehenge being the most um sort of famous one but it talks about stone circles and sacred wells and it's just like, it's really interesting and it's, and it's really pretty. Um, I didn't actually know until I read the scene, this is, this is perhaps kind of embarrassing, but I didn't actually know that the word henge was sort of a separate word outside of Stonehenge. Like Stonehenge is describing a particular henge that's made out of stones and henge being like a, a sacred, a sacred place um with druidic history or dru druidic connotations and it's like i don't know for whatever reason <laughs> I, was, I was almost embarrassed to not know that but it's pretty it's pretty cool so the whole thing it's like it's got a whole bunch of different submissions um of art of writing of poetry of you know nonfiction, of fiction it's it's just like it's it's a really cool little scene and it's it's so um sunny and fiery and and uh gives you a lot of suggestions for things that you can read or watch on a summer's eve <laughs> and i gotta say like this is so i really love this the way that it's printed and it's so soft it's so smooth on the front it's like what a, a rose petal cover like oh it's so it's so nice to hold all right next scene i have is Grammary number six, which is the summer 2020 issue. Of course, um, 
appropriate for summary things. Um, basically, this is done by K.D. Hume, who, um, it's like a, it's a persine about witchcraft and just kind of some of the things that they've, that they've learned. And, um, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, I really love persines that will combine personal stories and your personal life with sort of a loosely defined theme or subject. And I feel like this, uh, this is sort of like a witchcraft inspired persine. And it's focused a lot on the changing of the seasons. And so this has a lot of stuff about, um, about the summer. It's got a Pride Month spell jar, <laughs> appropriate. It's got, and now ducklings. <laughs> I love it. Talking about the ducklings that they had gotten. Um, and this whole thing, the reason, I mean, obviously it's sort of about, it, it's labeled sub, summer 2020. So it's obviously has some stuff about summer, but the thing that really kind of makes me feel like this is an appropriate summer solstice thing is that it says like, I'm not afraid of the dark anymore. And it has a lot of, um, sort of dark side protection visualizations and, um, shadow self meditations and sort of this, this thought about light versus dark and this, even just this introductory piece right here, the witch child, it feels very powerful. And it's just talking about, you know, the, the ways in which some people have given up this, um, witchiness and connection to the earth and connection to magic that they had as children. And what I really like about this is that it's not, it's sort of acknowledging the fact that society kind of ignores it or kicks it out of you in some cases, but a lot of it is like, it's the way that you have to live. And it's, it's kind of coming from, from you. Like it, I, I, <laughs> I should just say like, you know, I got, I was a heathen child, blah, blah, blah. I got weird early and learned to vanish as soon as I figured out that weird would make t life too hard for my anxi anxiety ridden brain. And like, isn't that just so powerful? Like it's not, it's not just about, oh, well, I thought I, that I should tone myself down or, or change some parts of myself because I thought that I should, or because people said it was weird. It's that specifically, like the reason that you can't deal with being weird or, or with, with fully being yourself is because of anxiety. Like that, that feels so deep. Like it, it, it feels very, I don't know. <laughs> it feels very important. Okay. <laughs> I guess you just need to check it out and read it for yourself. Cause this is, this is really, I just really like this scene quite a lot. And the last one is perhaps the hardest to convince you all that it should go in a summer solstice category, but just looking at the cover, I just kind of knew and just felt like, yep, this needs to be here. And that is Crap Hound 2020 Black Cat mini issue. Um, Crap Hound is a zine series that's like a collection of, um, images that <laughs> that's such a stupid description but that's really what it is it's like it's it's a big collection of stock images old images vintage images just a whole bunch of stuff all put together and it's really cool and it's amazing just to open it up and stare at it and you can use it to photocopy to put in your own zines or just as kind of you know comparing and contrasting and looking at all these images together. It's just, it's a stunning, stunning zine. This is the Black Cat mini issue. Usually the issues are a little bigger than this. Um, and they have a few different themes. And so this one is just entirely Black Cats. And as you can see, I've like put little uh, sticky notes on a whole bunch of them because I want to photocopy them or use them later or something, just the ones that I like. Um, so ignore those. but. Let's just give a little, a little flip through. It's just entirely images of black cats. 
And you know what? Black cats are a year-round cat. <laughs> they may be most associated with fall and whatever, but... <laughs> but look at this. I guess what, what made this particularly feel summery is just the fact that there's so many, so much to look at, and it feels almost like flipping through a casual magazine and looking for cool things. And I remember when I was like a little kid, something that I would do in the summer is we would get a bunch of like catalog magazines for party supplies. I have no idea how we ended up on those lists and whatever, but you know, it summer always felt like kind of the birthday party season. And I would, I mean, all of my relatives were born in summer. I was born in fall, but uh, you know, a lot of my friends had summer birthday parties and that just felt like a very party season. And so I would go through and just, like, put tabs next to things that I thought were cool. Like, inflatable fl flamingo pattern kiddie pool. Or, like, little crappy zipper pouches. And <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff. And this feels like it's so satisfying my my exploration and sort of collection um, lust, like, like, <laughs> like window shopping and going through and picking out my favorite things and something about it just it it reminds me of what I used to do in the summer and um it just feels so playful and exuberant that it's like this is yeah this is a summer thing <laughs> so highly recommend this and and there are a whole bunch of the of different um themed issues from Crab Hound and they're a little expensive just because they're so big. This is so many pages. This is a mini issue and it's so big. It's so many pages and it's, it's gigantic. You know, it's eight and a half by 11. And, um, I feel like I highly, I highly recommend like finding your favorite theme and just go ahead and splurge and get one of these because it is, it is really, it is something. <laughs> it is a sight to behold and it is, it is like, it is such an exciting thing to to have in a tarot uh, or what am I saying to have in a zine library having a having a zine collection so that's my that's my final one for summer solstice scenes let's see if I can kind of vaguely pick all these up to to sort of have a fanned final image or something. It's kind of hard to hold, hold, hold all these at once because they're all different different sizes. But anyway, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for letting me show these off. And I hope that you have a really great summer and a great summer solstice. Bye.